Hey everyone, Angry Honey Badger here, and in today's video we'll be taking a look at Jace. We'll start off with his abilities and what order you want to max him out in, then we'll go over his runes and his masteries, followed by counters to look out for, and which champions he does well against, along with team synergies. Finally, we'll talk about the items you want to consider purchasing on Jace when you play him, and then we'll take a look at his pros and cons. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you find it helpful, but for now, let's take a look at Jace, the Defender of Tomorrow. Go around the badger. As for Jace's abilities, let's start off with his passive Hextech Capacitor. He's going to gain 40 movement speed for 1.25 seconds and can move through units each time Transform is cast. As for his Q ability, this is his To the Skies and his Shock Blast, depending on which form you're in. We're going to put a point into this at level 1 and max this out first. In Hammer Stance, you're going to leap to an enemy dealing physical damage and slowing them. In Cannon Stance, you're going to fire an Orb of Electricity that detonates upon hitting an enemy, dealing physical damage to all enemies in the area of the explosion. As for his W ability, this is his Lightning Field and Hyper Charge. We're going to put a point into this at level 3 and max this out second. In Hammer Stance, passively this restores mana per strike. When you activate it, it's going to create a field of electricity damaging nearby enemies for several seconds. In Cannon Stance, you're going to gain a burst of energy, increasing attack speed to maximum for several seconds. As for his E ability, this is his Thundering Blow and Acceleration Gate. We're going to put a point into this at level 2 and max this out last. In Hammer Stance, you're going to deal magic damage to an enemy and knock them back a short distance. In Cannon Stance, this deploys an Acceleration Gate, increases the movement speed of all allies who pass through it, and if a Shock Blast is fired through the gate, the missile speed, range, and damage will all increase. And finally, on his R, we have Mercury Cannon or Mercury Hammer. Hammer Stance transforms the Mercury Hammer into the Mercury Cannon, gaining new abilities and increased range. The first attack in this form reduces the target's armor and magic resist. In Cannon Stance, this transforms the Mercury Cannon into the Mercury Hammer, gaining new abilities and increasing armor and magic resist. The first attack in this form deals additional magic damage. As for his Ruin page, you'll want to take Attack Damage Marks, Health Per Level Seals, Flat Magic Resist Glyphs, and Attack Damage Quintessences. As for his Masteries, you'll want to take 21 in the Offense and 9 in the Defense. Here's the page I recommend taking. As for champions that can counter Jace, let's start out with Rise. Rise can cycle through a quick combo and lock down Jace while doing so. This makes it difficult to have any kind of even trade with him early in lane. Be careful. Next is Fizz. Being able to dodge attacks and abilities from Jace can cause him to be a bit slippery. If he engages with his ult, he has two ways to potentially jump back to you after you use your Thundering Blow to get him off. A good Fizz can be quite a handful. And finally, let's talk about Urgot. The recent rise in his popularity has him working well against Jace in most cases. Urgot's strong passive and corrosive charge can make laning annoying and difficult. I recommend rushing all armor penetration items as Jace if you're in this matchup. As for matches that favor Jace, let's start out with Darius. Jace can peel him off while doing significant damage to Darius. Just be careful at level 6 as Darius dunks can kinda tickle. Next is Katarina. You have range and disengage, the two best things against Katarina. The only time she has a major advantage is if you've just entered ranged form and she wants to all in you since your hammer form won't be up for the disengagement due to your cooldowns. Besides that, have fun winning lane. And finally is Cassidy. In the early game, he doesn't really do anything to Jace. Since his Q only blocks magic damage, you'll still hurt him every time he tries to trade. He's also naturally weak pre-6, so go all in early at level 2 and you'll probably get him to burn most of his summoner spells. As for champions that synergize well with Jace, those include Nidalee, Corky, Kog'Ma, Caitlyn, and Xerath. Notice the synergy? Sieging Poke Friends. All of these champions can help poke down teams with Jace before important neutral objectives or while sieging turrets. Just remember to poke before full out engagements. This is your team's strength. As for the items you'll want to consider purchasing while you play Jace, there's two options at level 1. You can either start with the Crystalline Flask and Health Pots, or you can start with the Longsword and Pots. Crystalline is a bit safer and can help you keep control of your lane, but an early Longsword can be built into an early Brutalizer, helping you out with damage. As for your first trip back to base, you'll want to be picking up your tier to start stacking it so you can build a Man Immune. Also being able to pick up an early Brutalizer can be helpful to help you with damage cooldown reduction and armor pin, since you'll be ramping up your build and having no damage right away is a little bit inefficient in the lane for trading. Before you finish off your Brutalizer into a Yumu's Ghost Blade though, you'll typically want to be picking up a Last Whisper. Now there are some options before you've even gotten to this point. If you are in a magic damage heavy lane and needing resist from extreme amounts of burst can be helpful, I would recommend getting a Hex Drinker. Building it later into a Maw of Malmortius can be a very viable option later in the game when you dive into teamfights. 
As for the boots you want to purchase when you're playing Jace, you usually have a couple options. You can either go with any boots of resistance that can help you depending on your lane matchup, but typically, cooldown reduction boots will be working the best to help you get to maximum CDR. With a completed Muramana, a Yumu's Ghost Blade, a Last Whisper, and your boots, finishing out your build can be with a couple different items. The next good choice could be a Bloodthirster, providing you with even more damage and some lifesteal for fighting. If you did happen to pick up the Mob Malmordius, you would be at six items now, but if you weren't, there's two other great options to finish out with, either an Infinity Edge or a Black Cleaver. The Black Cleaver will provide you with obviously more health, a bit of damage, and cooldown reduction, which you wouldn't have had to get within your boots, so you could have gone with Merc Treads or Ninja Tappy. But if you want to go for all out damage and some crit, an Infinity Edge will provide great burst for your Shock Blasts. To review the items, make sure you check out the description below. Moving on to his pros and cons, let's start out with his pros. He has amazing harassment and poke options. He has two forms, which also gives him plenty of options and fights. He has built-in mana sustain if you can use it properly. He also has good escape and engage on single targets. He also scales very well into the late game. As for some cons, he's vulnerable to multiple gap closers. His high mana use early can make it difficult. He has no hard CC to really rely on. He's a very skill dependent champion and a slow ramp build path like most poke champions means you don't get your power spike as soon as other champions. And as for my personal thoughts on Jace, Jace is a very powerful champion in the right hands. It's not all just about landing Shock Blasts, although that's a very key thing to playing a poke-dependent champion. One nice thing about Jace is you have the option to go all in in a melee form. Now, one thing you need to be sure of is that you don't do this before you land some poke in a team fight, or you do this and take on too many enemy champions. Remember, you're playing as a mid lane carry, or you can still play him in top, obviously, but if you're playing him more as a carry, diving into a team fight and one of the first ones in will be problematic for your survival. Utilizing his poke with other champions on your team that can also assist can make it incredibly easy and effective for securing very important objectives and for getting towers, which is going to get more gold into your pockets, more power from Dragon, and maybe even poke people off to then get an early Baron to help you siege up and get ahead that way. Don't just think about going all in just because you can go all in. Make sure you use his strengths to win you the game. If you're looking to play some Jace, I highly suggest it. He is a very fun champion to try out. I wish you all the best of luck on the Fields of Justice, and I'll see all of you in the next build video.